My name is Ann Kraide and I welcome you all to my YouTube channel. For those who have subscribed, thank you so much. And for those who have not subscribed, kindly consider doing that. For the new viewers and new subscribers, karibu sana for this is home. My viewers, today I have an amazing guest with me. And she will be letting us know some of the culture shocks experiences that she had when she landed in Norway for the first time especially for those people who are interested to go to Norway. Please stay here with us that you may get to know some of the culture shocks that you expect when you get there. Yes, hi guys. So my name is Njeri, Njeri's Kitchen and Lifestyle. Thank you so much, Anne, for having me. You're and welcome. Today, Thank you. <laughs> yes, and today I'm going to talk about some of the culture shock that I experienced when I came to Norway. And the first is, of course, the weather. <laughs> In Norway, we talk so much about weather, weather, weather. So I came to Norway, it was in March, and March is a winter time here. And so that was like, I was excited because it was my first time to see snow and to touch snow for real, like to see it with my eyes. So I was so excited at the airport. I remember me trying to touch it. It was a little bit cold, but uh, it was a good experience. But my husband had come with a jacket because, of course, he knew that I don't understand the weather here. So he had come with some jackets, some warm clothes and socks because I needed that anyway, shoes. <laughs> and so I was like, what? I need all this, even the, what is it called? The Mboshori. Marvin. <laughs> yeah, the Marvin, you need it because of your ears. And I was like, what? So it's this cold. So when I came and it was like, what? It's beautiful, but it's cold. It was extremely cold for me. To come and the first thing that I experience is winter. Oh, but anyway, that is how Norway is. It's winter and summer, they are all together. So after I came to winter, then I traveled back. So the next time I came, it was like um, before Christmas. So it was getting, that is autumn, they call it fall because oh. of the leaves, they start to fall. Okay. So it was like something else. It's not green. The farmers have started to like prepare their farms for the next year, yeah, uh, plantation and so on. So it was like strange. It was like different. Everything okay. else was everything was different from what I have I had seen. Yeah. So that time when I came, farmers were starting to prepare the land. And so it was very different from what I had seen and experienced during winter. So okay. now it was something else <laughs> and it was not beautiful at all because the trees had fallen, the leaves had fallen. It was like the trees are there without leaves and it's cold. It was not a good experience. I can't remember. Even the winter was more beautiful than that time. Okay. And so, <laughs> and so I remember asking, but... How, how does the weather here goes? It's like, it's changing. It's like the weather is changing because when I came uh, during winter, that was very nice and beautiful. But now it's like, it's cold. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, because that was autumn. But anyway, that's how Norway is. And then, can uh, I ask you a question, please? Is it yeah. true that in Germany... <laughs> There are shorter days and long nights. In Norway? Yeah. Yes, it's very true. 
it's very true <laughs> and it's kind of interesting because during winter that's what we call them longer nights and short days okay because it can get dark at 3 p.m. in the okay. afternoon wow. dark mm -hmm. as in dark giza you need the light it's extremely dark so by 4 p.m. it's like it's midnight already wow that is winter so it gets um it gets dark like gradually from 3 p.m. it starts to get dark dark and then by 4 p.m. it's like dark 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 dark, dark. so okay. it becomes a long a long night because the darkness came so early in the afternoon and believe yeah and it goes all the way around until tomorrow, maybe at 8 or 9 a.m. That's when you get the daylight. <laughs> and imagine, since yesterday at 3 p.m. till today at 9 a.m., that's when you get the daylight. Okay. Wow. So that day becomes so short. short because yeah. you got Yeah, you got the daylight, uh, like, short hours, just very short hours. Then during that is winter. Then during summer, it becomes the opposite. It never gets dark. Oh, okay. <laughs> so sometimes outside at my garden, and when I look at my, it's like uh, 1 a.m. at night, and I'm just outside. You see people are outside, they are walking, they are jogging, people are barbecuing, people are out. It's like, and it's a little bit tricky because, um, it can tamper with your sleeping system because yeah. it's not it's not dark. So why am I going to bed? That's eleven a.m. Yeah. yeah, it's eleven p.m. Sorry, but when you look outside, it's like it's four p.m. in the evening. So we get longer days now during summer. It's like no darkness. Hakuna giza Okay. So the dark, it can be dark maybe from for two hours. Maybe from maybe two to three, maybe from four a.m. it starts to get the daylight again. Daylight, daylight, and then the whole day till midnight again. It gets dark, dog. So it's kind of what, what, uh, what um, part of the world is this? <laughs> but it's it's really interesting and it's really cool, and we get adapted to it now i'm used to it yeah of course summer are my favorite days yeah <laughs> me too <laughs> i usually can't wait for summer to come that i may get to bask a very flink what is flink called in english yeah they're very good in creating like spots you know we are very good um in winter spots for example a skiing yeah yeah so even during winter it's like it's not boring we have things to do anyway kids are outside playing in the snow so mm -hmm. life still continues so life does not stand still because it's winter because it's minus 20 no yeah. things still go on but during summer it's like it does something with us here in norway even the norwegians it's like it warms us from the outside and from the inside and it, it comes from the outside you know so people are out they are smiling they are talking how the weather is beautiful today when you are at the shops and people are saying yeah the weather is beautiful you know Norwegians wow. talk about the weather yeah. every time everywhere with anyone they talk okay. about the weather uh -huh. but during winter it's like they get like this they are done yeah you die. It's like now it's depression time. Now it's cold. <laughs> people are not smiling. You're you're working. People are not smiling to you. Yeah. It's like yeah, they get like you're yeah, very cold. They become cold. But during winter, we experience everyone is like yeah, it's mm -hmm. like it does something. But uh, yeah, that's how the weather is. So that was a culture shock for me when I came to know it. both winter and summer because it's something that i had never experienced so we those people summer, who want to come to norway they should be prepared to sometimes to experience shorter days and longer nights and in summer the other way around yes longer yeah. days and shorter nights yeah wow mm -hmm. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like that. I remember my uncle, yeah, it's my dad because it's the brother to my father. He once visited me uh, with his wife and I forgot to tell them, you know, it's like I got used to this uh, weather that I didn't even remember to tell them. They came to visit during the month of June. Okay. So I forgot to tell them how the weather is at night. It never gets dark. Okay. So the following day, they were like, hey, Jerry, you didn't tell us that in Norway it never gets dark at night. We were waiting to see darkness come so we could sleep. No dark. When we look at the clock, it's midnight. So they tried to to find more curtains in their room to make Mm -hmm. it dark. And I was like, oh my (laughs) God. How it is. <laughs> so they had a very big problem to okay. sleep at night. It was not easy for them. And you understand, yeah. because at home we sleep because of the darkness. Mm-hmm. But here you just go to bed when it's light, it's um it's daylight outside because that's how uh, the culture is here, the weather is here. So as you have said, people preparing come to Norway, you have to be prepared. <laughs> yeah, this weather change. that yeah. kind of weather definitely de- destroys the sleeping system and yes. when it gets uh, too late darkness comes too late one can be tempted even to oversleep yeah exactly oh yes yeah, forgetting oh, yes. that is that forgetting that it is always it is done yeah that Do they should wake that? up and go to work or go yes. to school <laughs> yeah mm. I had that problem. I still have it today. Okay. Um, when it's winter time, I still want to sleep. I can sleep even the whole day. I still want, if I'm free, I can sleep until 11 a.m. But during summertime, I'm up at 5 a.m. I'm outside going to jog. 11 p.m. or 1 a.m. at midnight, I'm outside working, doing something. It's like, yeah, it, it, it destroys you somehow because you mm-hmm. don't follow that routine. Yeah, you get you get you get addicted to how the weather is that day and how you react. Because yeah. if you sleep until eleven a.m. and during that is during winter and during summertime you're waking up at five a.m. It's like what is this? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that's how the weather is. Something else that was interesting to me when I came to Norway. And it was like a culture shock. It's about the cabin. Norwegians like to travel up on the mountains okay. to go and just have their good time at the cabins. Mm-hmm. And there are other cabins that they don't have water. They okay. don't have electricity, no internet, no Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. And even you can see someone going just by themselves. They just park and someone says, I'm going out for a holiday or for a weekend or for a summertime or winter in the middle of winter snow. They just pack and they go on the mountain. They stay at the cabin and they are having the best time of their life. That is something else that I didn't understand Mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. How? (laughs) When I remember where I come from, I come from... (laughs) That is the key in me. Forgive me, guys. <laughs> Not a problem. It, it applies almost to each and every Kikuyu. <laughs> yeah, that is my L and R. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. So when I remember where we come from, it's like a house with electricity, water, Wi-Fi. It's like that is the top. That is what everyone wants in mm-hmm. Kenya. But yeah. when you come here, because they have grown up with those things, yeah, it's so they not come, news to them. No, it comes their opposite. They want mm-hmm. to isolate themselves from these things that they have grown up with. So they go to the mountain. But nowadays, it's like they are getting the modern cabins. People are building big cabins with yeah. even a flash toilet. But those old cabins, they, they have like the outdoors toilet. That's what oh. they use. Okay, and that is what Norwegians feel like. This is what we want. It's like they feel so good when they are up on the mountains. Mm-hmm. You know, during summer, we we like to travel and to take road trips, and that time is when you see that 
like every cabin there are cars there people are just in the cabins people are just out there so that was something I was like a culture shock for okay. me <laughs> yeah <laughs> but anyway that's how Norwegian felt yeah number three that is, is our flag yeah it was interesting <laughs> Yeah, something else I noticed is about the flags. Okay. Norwegians like to hang their flags even at home. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have that really at home in Kenya. We have the flags maybe at Kwa Chief or uh, yeah, government offices, etc. Yeah. But mm -hmm. here at homes, they do have their flags. They can hang the flags during the uh, uh, 17th May, the Independence Day of Norway and um, when someone is having a birthday they can raise a flag and it's like wow they celebrate someone is having a birthday maybe um, a, a child is being baptized then the flag is hanging even at church they hang the flag if there is a burial at church so they hang the flag half halfway okay yeah if uh, if people have a flag a flag pole yeah. Maybe at a private home. It's also allowed to have it at your private home. Yeah. If someone has died, you can hang it half. So you are mourning and people can see you are mourning. Mm -hmm. And if someone is having a birthday or confirmation or baptism, then you can hang the flag up. It's like, wow, that was also interesting. It was also Maybe, <laughs> Maybe they have too much love for their countries. Yeah. Or I, it's a way yeah. of being patriotic. Oh, yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. And Norwegians are a little bit reserved people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can be reserved. And if they don't know you, they like to have their space. They like to, 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 to have a distance. But if they get to know you, then a Norwegian is a friend that you can have forever it's someone that you can trust and you can have forever if they get to have you so they love their space and they love you to respect their space and especially if you people don't know each other but if you know each other they are good to go they are very okay. good and kind but they're mm -hmm. kind of reserved people okay and uh yeah another thing was uh the, the norwegian language when i came to norway i couldn't mm -hmm think that one day I will come to understand, speak, talk this language. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine. It was like, oh my goodness, where even do I start from? What <laughs> are they even saying? <laughs> but yeah, but anyway, that is how it is when you come to a country where they don't speak English, for example, yeah. in Germany too. So yeah, you that's true. Yeah. German, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, that was also a culture shock, but yeah, you have to learn the Norwegian anyway. You go to school, you learn it. So yeah, and then you're you're good to go. Uh something else Norwegian like is bread. <laughs> hey, mm -hmm. these people and bread. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you say that uh in Germany, you guys the Germans like sausage and meat. Yeah. Yeah, so in Norway is bread. Okay. <laughs> These guys eat bread, mm -hmm. bread, bread, bread in the morning for breakfast. Then they and then the Norwegians they take with the lunch work mm -hmm. the office. Mm -hmm. It's called matpakia or okay. misna. Mm -hmm. So you take a brioche that is a slice of bread, and then you put on your yeah you can put on the toppings that you want. Mm -hmm. So you can have bread for breakfast, bread for lunch. Oh, then okay. they have a early dinner. They eat dinner at 5 p.m. That was something else that we don't have in Kenya. We eat dinner at late, 8 mm -hmm. p.m., 9 p.m. But here dinner they eat at mm -hmm. 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. People are having dinner. So and after dinner, in the evening, before you go to bed, maybe at around 7, 7 30 or 8, they yeah. have this, this food that is called quail smart, just something like before you go to bed. Mm -hmm. So many like to have bread. So you can have bread like three times 
a day. <laughs> wow, that's interesting also. Yeah, they love bread, 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 bread. But for me and my daughter, we are a uh, yeah, skeptical about eating bread all the time. Mm-hmm. But for my husband and my son, my small boy, if they don't have bread in the house, then they don't have food. There is chaos in the house. There must be <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There is food for those two. Yeah. Eat bread. So that was all something else. Like, what? In Kenya, we just have bread for breakfast. Yeah. If you, don't, you didn't take bread for breakfast, then that's it. You yeah. don't have bread for lunch, bread mm-hmm. in the evening, bread, bread, bread. So they eat um lot of bread. And something else that was interesting and that's like a culture shock was alcohol. Okay. So, yeah. Above, yeah, of course you have to be above 18 mm-hmm. for you to buy alcohol. Mm-hmm. But uh, alcohol, you can buy alcohol at a food grocery shop but they close at 8 p.m. You cannot mm-hmm. buy alcohol after 8 p.m. From Monday to Friday. Okay. And on Saturday, they close at 6 p.m. So okay. no, it's just, they are very strict on that. But if it is like a wine monopoly, they close it at 3 p.m. on weekends. So you can either buy uh, yeah, alcohol or wine at a wine monopoly or a grocery shop. And it's very strict with hours. They have like where they put the alcohol when 8 p.m. When it's 8 p.m. in the evening, it's like they, they pull up a kind of a curtain or something and mm-hmm. then no more of selling alcohol. Okay. So and they respect that. <laughs> so that was also something, yes. Uh-huh. Even in Kenya at midnight, you can just assess your alcohol. <laughs> so yeah, that was something else. And um, in Norway, yeah, we have universities, people study, people go to school, but there are no graduate parties like we have at home. Okay. I think they have graduation in London, UK, England, and US. They have this uh, graduation with these graduation clothes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Do you have that in Germany? Yeah. In Germany, we have it as well. Oh, okay. We don't have it in Norway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not in Norway. You go to university, you study for three years or four years or even a doctor for seven years. When you're done at school, you just say bye bye. Maybe you and your friends, you can have a party or you can just plan something at school. But to have a party like a graduation party and all your family, you know, in Nairobi, when we have these big universities and uh, when people are graduating, it's like everyone else knows there is a graduation this coming Friday, this coming Saturday, because there are so many cars. People have traveled from all over the country to come yeah. and celebrate yeah. you. You are yeah. done with school mm-hmm. and it's a big party and you're having these clothes of graduation. Mm-hmm. That one does not exist in Norway. <laughs> so that was like, what? How? But why can't you even graduate? But why? You have to, you know. But anyway, that's how Norway is. And they try to make like everyone is equal. Even if you're a doctor, and I wash at a hospital or I wash at a grocery shop, yeah. we have equal rights. So human rights in Norway, it's something else. It's something that I respect. There are no classes here. Because when I came here, I thought there were classes in Norway, you know, like we have at home for the rich, for the poor, for the richest, but no, it's like it's equality. So even if you have studied, you have your degree, your PhD, and I have not studied. Yeah. When we meet at a class for uh, for our um, for our kids, we are equal. So we don't mm-hmm. have classes in our way. That is something else that I like. That was one of the best culture that I loved about Norway. It's equality. It's the same here in Germany. Yeah. People usually actually don't have party for cere- for graduation 
The no. only party that I've seen, and it is not so big, it's for the little children who are uh, going tra transformation from kindergarten to primary to school. Primary school. Oh, they get yeah. some gifts and they get mm. to celebrate a little bit, like they get the Zuka tutor. That's um, somewhere they get to put every kind of uh, sweets, chocolates. Mm. Mm. Just a little celebration, but putting mm. on this gown for graduation mm. and so mm. on and so forth, it's not mm. so big, just mm. something small. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, and I, I see it especially for those children who are uh, transform, uh, trans sitting from kindergarten to primary school. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we have it here too. And it's not like something very big, it's mm -hmm. just like a small party, just to make those kids feel like they are coming from a kindergarten to primary school because they are kids so there is that something to make the kids feel good but for these uh, grown-up people graduation for universities etc no we don't have that and is education free in Norway yes it's free. up to we what level or uh... up to where you want university okay. I, I finished my university last year and it was free we don't pay anything. But in our way, we pay tax. So our tax is what that pay. <laughs> we pay tax, 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 tax in our way. Okay. But education, you can study as much as you want and it's free. free wow, free that's very interesting. At least our viewers who want to study, they can apply for universities in Norway. Of course, yes. It's scholarship, free. we have as scholarship. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's free here. Mm. And something else that uh, was the, my last, yeah, I, I have so many culture shocks that I experienced when I came to Norway. But let okay. me talk about this one, the last one now. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was a school uniform. Kids in Norway don't have school uniform. And it was like, what? How? How can you go to school with your home clothes? No uniform. And I was mm. like, what? Yes, that's how Norway is. No uniform. You go to school with your home clothes. That mm -hmm. is how it is. And I was like, okay, this is really another country. So I don't know of, of Germany. Do you it have is the uniform? same here in Germany. We don't have school uniforms. Yeah. And I like it because it makes all the children equal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You cannot be able to differentiate between the rich and the poor. Mm -hmm. It equalizes everybody. Yeah, that's true. But I, uh, for my uh, personal opinion, I find it two way because mm -hmm. for me, I think the uniform is what that equalizes everyone. You come to school when you're equal with the uniform. That is my point of view. Mm -hmm. But when you come to school with your home clothes, you come to school, you have a jacket that costs uh, 4,000 Kenyan shillings. Maybe the other parent cannot afford it. They have that cost 200 Kenyan shillings. I find it even... A little bit like this, yeah. It's like they have expensive clothes, and it's more more for the what is it called? Undom, eh? the teenagers. Okay. The teenagers, yeah. They want to have the most expensive thing. They want, you know, it's like kind of pressure to the parents that cannot afford. Because if you're going to school and you see your friends are coming with these fancy 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 expensive clothes and you cannot have, uh, afford it it's kind of something else a, a strange feeling but on the other hand it's like it's free you can have what you want to school i wish we had that in kenya hey <laughs> <laughs> my point of view i think we can see it from two sides yeah because when they put on uniform what about mm -hmm. that parent who cannot be able to afford to buy new uniforms every time and the kids yeah, maybe go in cool. tattered uniform in school. Yeah. So I can be able to, to see that yeah. that kid comes from a poor family. Yeah, exactly. That yeah. also, yeah. Mm. It has the both sides. Both sides. Yeah. yeah. Right. I remember when I went to school, it was like that. Someone have used one school uniform for two years. Mm -hmm. So you don't have, yeah. yeah. That's true. Yes. So, yeah, those are my culture shock. I have so many, but uh, I hope to come back again to Uncrazy YouTube channel. <laughs> Thank you so well, much, Jerry. Thank mm -hmm. you for accepting to come as a host in my channel. 
<laughs> and uh, my viewers, my subscribers, I kindly request you to go to Jerry's Kitchen and Lifestyle and show some love. Please let's support her. She also has some cooking tips for her. Go yes. and show her some love. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anne, for having me. I'm so, so, so humbled and I appreciate it so much. Thank you are you. always welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye, bye, -bye. bye. My viewers, as you have heard it by yourself, those are some of the culture shocks that you expect when you get to Norway. Thank you so much for watching this video and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.